Welcome to my channel. Today I will teach you how to install Mac OS on your computer. This method is different from my other guides. This time let's make it more intuitive. Running a Mac OS on a non-Apple machine is called Hackintosh. The basics of Hackintosh is for you to know if your hardware is capable of running such operating system. A good resource to read is from Dortania's OpenCore install guide. You can visit the site and read more about it. I will just simplify the process on this video. Open your device manager on Windows. Take note of the processor, graphics card, audio codec, Ethernet and Wi-Fi card. Click the small arrow beside each device to see the details of the hardware. Grab a notepad and write down the details of your machine. This may help you later on to know if your machine is capable of running Mac OS. The essential things we need to know is the processor and its generation. In this example, I have Intel i5. To know the generation, the number after the i5, this is 10, meaning it's a 10th generation. If you see 5, then it's 5th generation, and so on. In this table, the typical Intel-based processor from i3, i5, i7, and i9 with its accompanied Intel built-in or integrated graphics. Each generation can support a specific Mac OS minimum version to its higher version. This applies to desktop and laptop processors. Integrated or built-in graphics means that the graphics card or embedded on the processor, while the discrete or external graphics card are those separate hardware. For AMD processor, these are the supported namely Bulldozer, Jaguar and Ryzen. Like Intel UHD graphics, AMD has built-in graphics card called Vega. A supported graphics card is essential for you to have a smooth overall Mac OS experience. Your dock will have transparency, as well as the entire look of the desktop. Be able to properly output your screen to different monitors. You can also use CPU-Z and GPU-Z to know more about your hardware, especially if you're looking for the specific code name of your AMD processor and graphics card. Moving on to the graphics card, here are the most recommended one that can run on your Hackintosh build. Polaris 10 and 20, Vega 10 and 20, Navi 10 and 20, brands like Sapphire, Asus, Gigabyte, here's the example. Be sure that you're buying the original one since there are fake on the market. While well, here is the list of unsupported NVIDIA. They will never be supported on Mac OS since NVIDIA and Apple has love-hate relationship. Stay away from NVIDIA. There are no drivers for Mac OS since 2017. AMD GPU are the way to go. Desktop PC users with Intel processor on 11th to 14th generation or later. You need a supported GPU to run Mac OS since the built-in Intel graphics card has no drivers as of this recording. Desktop PC users with AMD processor or bulldozer to Zen. You need a supported GPU if you don't have a built-in graphics card. Recommended laptop with any brands using Intel Core processor that has 7th to 10th generation since those generations can run up to Sonoma. Laptop with any brands using Intel Core processor that has 11th to 14th generation with NVIDIA and Intel Iris graphics are not recommended. You can't have a smooth experience with Mac OS since it doesn't have a graphics drivers for that GPU. The only way is for you to connect a supported GPU using eGPU cable with a power supply that looks similar to this. It will remove the portability of the laptop since you're connecting a bunch of things to it. If you have Intel Core with 2nd to 6th generation that want to install Sonoma, you can also use the eGPU cable method. But if you're on a budget, you can install the OpenCore Legacy Patcher after installing Sonoma on your machine. Recommended laptop with AMD processor and Vega graphics or other supported GPU. I don't have a list for these. I found a recent one with Acer Nitro 5 on Reddit. This one has HP Omen 15. You can refer to my previous slides on this video for the supported GPU. In case if you have NVIDIA with AMD processor, the NVIDIA graphics card are typically disabled. The Vega graphics card will take place. The great way to know if your AMD machine is supported through searching. Just type Ryzentosh then followed by your laptop model. Supported AMD GPU may change later on. Since the development of the driver are still on progress, which is called Noted Red. So what about if you're building a Hackintosh build or operating your machine? What are supported motherboard, RAM, Wi-Fi cards, peripherals, 
What a great way for our sponsor, which is my affiliate link, on my website that is provided on the description box. Has my curated lists of hardware that will meet your Hackintosh build or upgrades. Using my link can help me create more videos like this. Thank you. Here are the things we need. PC or laptop with Windows 7 or 11. 32GB USB flash drive. EFI folder. Vento. Mac OS restore image. R drive image. Target unit. PC or laptop. Windows 10 portable edition. All those files are provided on my website. For demonstration, I will be using this NEC VersaPro VSS Core i5 with 5th generation processor. I will be installing Monterey. The process of this guy will be the same to other Mac OS version. Go ahead on the description box of this video. Click my website. Download all the mentioned required files. Just follow along with this video. As for the AFI folder, from the Olarila website, scroll down on the page. If you're using desktop PC, choose your processor generation then download. For those using a laptop or notebook, select your generation then download it. Another way to find your AFI is on GitHub. Just search your laptop model, go through with the results. The beauty of it is that, they are well documented, which are working, or what not, as well as the BIOS settings to make this work on your machine too. Now to download this AFI configuration, just scroll back up and click the latest release. From the next page, just click the zip file. If you want to create your own AFI configuration, Dortania's website is a comprehensive guide that you can follow. This is in-depth guide that will help you create one. If you have a lot of time to spare, you can dive into it. Once everything is downloaded, move them into your desktop. You should have five files. Extract both the AFI and Bentoy. Insert your USB flash drive on the computer. Delete the two zip files, go inside the Ventoy folder and open up the Ventoy program. Go to Options, Partition Style, select GPT, then click Install, click OK, unprompted. I forgot the insert my 60 for gigabytes USB on this portion that's why you can see 16 gigabytes on this recording. Close the Ventoy program. Drag the AFI folder into the USB. Make sure that inside the AFI folder contains the two folder, boot and OC. On the left is the correct file structure so that your computer will boot properly later on. Copy the remaining three files, R drive image, Windows 10, Monterey restore image. By now, you should have these on the USB. Eject and remove the USB. Let's Google the BIOS key. Since I'm using NEC laptop, I will look for NEC BIOS key. I will press F to while booting. Insert the USB to the target laptop and turn it on. 
pressing the BIOS key, which in my case is F2. Using the arrow keys on the keyboard to navigate the settings, pressing enter to change the options. These are the basic settings we need to change. If you have this on your BIOS, change it. If not, leave it. Every computer has different BIOS. Yours might be different to mine. If your AFI was from GitHub, change the BIOS settings to match with your machine. Save the settings and exit by pressing F10 once done. We will now boot into the Ventoa USB. Press down to select Windows 10, press Enter twice. This will load the Windows 10 into the USB flash drive. Wait for it to load. Click Disk Genius on the taskbar. Click Agree then OK. On the left, I have Samsung SSD on HD0. Right click then delete all partition then click Yes. Above it, right click, Create ESP Partition. Uncheck Create MSR Partition. Click OK. Above it, right click, Create New Partition. Click OK. Leave the settings as shown here. Click OK. Click Save All on the upper left. Click Yes twice. Click ESP and above it. Click Files. Now open a file explorer. We will drag the AFI folder from here. Click Complete, Close Disk Genius. Remember, if the AFI you had downloaded is not working, you can always replace this AFI. Just boot to the Ventoy USB and replace the AFI with a new one using Disk Genius. While you're still here, let me invite you to subscribe if you haven't do so. Moving on, let's install our drive image from the USB flash drive. Click Finish and let's restore the Mac OS Monterey recovery file. Click Restore Image. Navigate the Monterey.rdr file. Click Next and the password is Lightmint09. Click OK. I will restore it on Drive E. Click this data, then click Drive E. Click Next and OK. Click Start. This takes 7 minutes to restore in my case. Grab a coffee. Click OK, then close our drive image. Let's reboot and remove the USB flash drive.
When you reach from this stage, then congratulations, we are done with the installation. If you encountered errors, comment down below with your hardware information so that we can figure out a solution. This are a typical error you may encounter. If your Wi-Fi is not working, I got you, we have a fix for that, visit my channel. You may find other fixes to on Hackintosh. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. From here I will leave this video, I just got a video capture card. The rest of the video from here will be just the installation setup.